All right, good morning, Countryside. Let's stand together. We're going to get started this morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Just going to roll with it. Ramblers in the wilderness, and we can't find what we need. We get a little restless from the search and get a little worn down in between. Like a bull chasing the man, I know there's a man left in his own skin. Where everybody needs someone beside them, shining like a lighthouse from the sea. Brother, let me be your shelter. Never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call when you're low. Brother, let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving on. Be the one who lights the way through home. Face down in the desert now, there's a cage locked around my heart. I find a way to drop the key. Let's give God a hand this morning. All right. Amen. Well, welcome to Countryside and Happy Father's Day. You will see a tremendous spread of sweet things for a lot of sweet men in this in this building today. I think our today. ladies got the assignment. I think so. They went a little <laughs> went a little extra. I think so. If you don't have diabetes, there's a good opportunity to get it uh, this morning with this spread. Uh, so, welcome to Countryside. We're going to have a time of greeting this morning. Make sure you find a dad out there and uh, let them know how much they're loved. Uh, we're going to sing a song during this time. If you came prepared uh, with a tither and offering, you can do that at this time as well. We have a box in the back. We also have communication cards back there. So, if you have a prayer request uh, that you'd like the church to uh, pray about, you can do that at this time as well. All right, you guys feed away. <laughs> can count the times I've called your name some broken night And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia I forget that you keep coming around Yeah, ain't no way you'll ever let me down Good God Almighty Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is. 
not like sun in the morning. I know you're gonna be there every day. So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise the Lord. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. I praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise in your name, no matter what comes. Cause I know where I be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my life. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Amen. All right, let's wrap up conversation. Start making your way back towards your seats. We're going to sing one more song called The Father's House. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Lay your burdens down Ooh, hear me in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're near the Father's journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. And failure's never final when the Father's in the room. And failure's never final.
Jericho was a breaking, strongholds now are shaking, and love is breaking through, and the problem's in the room. And love is breaking through, and the problem's in the room. Ooh, lay your burden down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame. Thank you. You may be seated. We're going to have a little video before we do the announcements this morning. The video trailer is on what's happening in the Wednesday night Bible studies that are going on, so it'll give you some idea. All right? There we go. Ephesians 1.1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians is considered to be the most concise, theologically rich book in the Bible. This is a survival manual for Christians. This is how you can survive and, and thrive, he's going to tell them, in the midst of a world that is not friendly to your message. Verse 5, when we were dead in our sins, he made us alive together with Christ. We used to be in a graveyard, now we're in this growing, flourishing garden. Are you killing sin actively right now, or is it killing you? Are you gaining ground or losing ground? Are you in the fight? Don't you think that means you should do all you can to bring inside those who are still disconnected from eternal life? That if the people in your city, your school, your neighborhood, your family are ever going to hear the gospel, it's going to be through your mouth. This great God has put all of his resurrection power into us so that he can bring us to salvation and, and, and healing to the world through us. Before the world was ever established, before any of this had ever been made, God knew you, he knew your name, and he loved you. That's what happens when you meet God in the story of Jesus. It's a, a story with such beauty and power and drama in it that just getting swept up into it forever changes you. It's not behavior modification. It's soul transformation at the, at the core level. So you see, as Paul nears the end of the book of Ephesians, he's trying to get the Ephesians to see that in all their relationships, even the most normal relationships, they're actually serving God and putting God on display. Paul's prayer here, I am, am praying for you also, that you would see the hope that God has given you in the gospel, that you would see that he's in control and that he's working in all things, that you would understand your great worth to God, that you would recognize the power God has put inside of you, and that you would ask God to extend that power through you to people all over the world who, who have yet to hear about him. Amen? Amen. And if you missed that, this is what's going on on Wednesday nights in small group. So make sure that you have signed up for that. Good morning and welcome to Countryside. Her name is Rachel. Yeah, I'm Rachel. <laughs> and my name is Jesse. And it's good to have you here on Father's Day Sunday. We want to start by celebrating our birthdays. So first and foremost, we're going to do that. Our sweet Miss Ethelene turns 40 this year. So stand up, Miss Ethelene. Show them all how good 40 looks. And Rachel is um, 621. Is Rachel, are you 21? So Rachel's <laughs> going to turn 21. And then we also have Miss Jamie Peacock, who I don't think is here, but if you see her on Facebook, give her a shout out. So let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless y'all. Happy birthday to you. We are exactly one week away from Vacation Bible School. 
If you look over here, we have a small sneak peek that we threw together this weekend. I think that looks us. great. Y'all did a good job. The lighthouse could use a little work. I'm, I'm going to try to fix it. Does anybody have a big beacon they can <laughs> let Miss Rachel borrow? It's really for bothering the top. me. <laughs> we are still looking for the baby's classroom teacher and a helper and the VBS class, which is not VBS, VPK, so two to three year old classroom, I believe it is, four year old. Um, if you're still needing to register, it's on the back. I need everybody to register. It will go a lot smoothly if you're ac actually in house and you can do it earlier than next Sunday at the door. So if you have a smartphone, this is called a QR code. So this little thing on the back side of the bulletin by the um, VBS registration. You open your camera and you hover your camera over this and it'll bring up a little box and you'll, you can click that and it'll bring you to a form. So if you've never done that before, I'm pretty new to the QR code thing, so don't feel silly, but that's how you do it. So just take your phone out if you have a smartphone. If you still have a flip phone, head to Verizon, get you a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, next up, somebody's, somebody's clearing their throat at me. They told me to move on. Um, baptism and cookout is coming up in just a few weeks, so that's going to be on June the 30th. We are going to have two services, so they'll still have a service here for folks that don't want to drive over to God's country, right, Pastor? That's right. So it's going to be on the week, Iva. We're going to have a service over there and a service here, so um, we encourage you, though, to go and just celebrate those baptisms. We will do a cookout, so we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs that we're going to cook out, and we're just asking you guys to bring sides. Um, desserts. We'll probably do um, the drinks too. So we'll take drinks and ice and stuff over there. So join us for just a sweet celebration that Sunday. And information is in the bulletin about that. Is there Sunday school that day? Probably not because we're going to be way divided. So it'll probably just be a 1030 service, but we'll do clarification in the bulletin next week for that. Today is Bible Drive Sunday. The Bibles are $3 each. And if people don't know what that is, is there's bags back there. Is there still bags back there? There are six bags. We need you to take them today and write a little message to the people that get them in the jail. Please do not put anything personal in there. No name, or especially no address, no last name. If you want to use a first name, I, that might be okay. First name? I don't know. No last name, no address, no telephone number. Yeah, we put our church information in there, but those Bibles are used to encourage um, prisoners, and they also give them other resources, and we often get um, letters back from them just saying how much they mean to them, and it does have our church name in there, and we're good with that. We want them to know somebody loves them, and there's still hope, so that's the purpose of that ministry, and John and Nancy Beck, wave your hands. If y'all have any questions how to plug into that, see them. All right. Um, Miss Wendy, where are you at? Can you stand up for us? Miss Wendy Robbins has been teaching at our schools. So I say schools because we shared her with Riverside 17 years ago, and she's been faithful there ever since. But she decided she's going to retire and just live her best life. I might have something to do with that sweet grandbaby that's coming. I don't know. <laughs> in September, she is going to Texas. So her daughter lives in Texas um, and is expecting her first baby. But we're going to do a, a sweet little celebration for her next week after church in the fellowship hall. So plan to stay behind if you want to um, write her card, just letting her know how much you appreciate all of the faithful service that she's had. When did you start? 87. That's crazy. You were like 17 when you started teaching probably. All right. So, um, but thank you. We really appreciate what you've done for both schools and we're going to miss you being teaching, but we'll still see you here. So. Wednesday night, small groups have officially started. It's still not too late to join. Once again, it's the QR code. Just hover it over with your smartphone. Click the link and find a class or home that's close to you if you'd like. All right. And the last thing that we have is Father's Day celebration. So, oh boy. We have, I think, over 200 desserts on this table. And there's not 200 of y'all. So you're going to have to take several desserts home because we don't, the office staff do not want diabetes. <laughs> if you do have um, sugar problems, 
there is a disclaimer. We're going to tease and say we took all the sugar out of it, but we did not. I don't think there's anything sugar-free. Sorry, Mr. Mark. I'll make you a sugar-free something this week. Um, if you don't mind, can you two girls help me do something? Raise your hand if you came in late and did not get a ticket. So, George or Pearl and Emily, raise your hand. Okay. So there's three. How many more do I need? Can y'all raise your hands high so I know how many? I've got one here, Mr. Ralph, right here on the front row, baby. Anybody else? Mr. Ernie, did you get your ticket? All right. I know he wants his sweets. I, I know you people with sweet sweet teeth, sweet tooth. How do you say it? Sweet teeth, sweet tooth, tooth. Just one tooth can be sweet. That's it. All right. Is everybody ready? Everybody got a ticket? All right, y'all get them out, get them warmed up, have your wife kiss it so you can be the first one up here to get the most favorite dessert. Ma'am? Absolutely. Look. Oh, you know what? I'm going to let you be the first one to pick for Mr. Jerry. You come on up. No, please. What is his favorite? Uh, he's everything. <laughs> one of each? All right, so we don't have to put yours in because you're going to pick for Mr. Jerry first. Pick several. Pick something big. While Miss Norma's deciding what to take to Mr. Jerry, I do want to mention, um, just thank AJ and his youth team. AJ, Joel, Mr. Jody spent Thursday um, camping with the boys. AJ's realizing that he's not as young as he once was because he planned a whole weekend <laughs> full of stuff. But they did Thursday night camp out with the boys, came home Friday. He slept for about two hours. They got up. They did all kinds of service all over Gainesville helping our elderly and people in need. Um, so they did a lot of yard cleaning and then they did water slide and then they had some boys talk them into taking them to the river after that. So if you see our youth leaders, they are not well. <laughs> they need a nap. All right. So we're going to start calling when we call your number. Come on up. I'll call one, you call one. <clears throat> come on up and grab several desserts because there's enough goodness. All right, 882071. Who's the luckiest man in the room? All oh, right. Mr. Ross. All right, come on All up. All right. 882082. Are you chocolate, oh. or vanilla, caramel? Pastor, was that you <laughs> that called? <laughs> Pastor is the second luckiest. Oh, he's calling Uncle Jimmy. Yes, please take several. I'm not even kidding. We, I, I'm not kidding that we have 200 desserts up here. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> you boys cannot. Just because your last name is Keith doesn't mean you can take this whole table. <laughs> Mr. Jimmy has been teasing that he's taken this whole table since he got here. All right, Pastor. We're going to let him think for a minute. 882102. He knew what he was getting. Eight eight two zero seven four. All right, here we go, Mr. Ralph. Who's next, <laughs> Mr. Jimmy? This is rigged. All right, they're even bringing their tickets up to prove, eight, <laughs> like we're gonna question them. Eight eight two zero oh, seven three. Oh, Mr. Carl. Mr. Carl, he likes to walk the Appalachian Trail, so he can afford to eat several desserts because yeah. he's a walker. Eight eight two one one five. Take several. Please get two. Eight eight two one one six. Whoa. Oh, Mr. Greg is running from the sound booth. <laughs> <laughs> eight eight two zero eight one. <laughs> Mr. Ralph is still thinking. Ooh. Eight eight two zero seven seven. Is zero seven seven. All right. Eight eight two zero six nine. All right. Oh, his wife made a bunch of these desserts. <laughs> this sweet lady, she makes homemade flan. Yeah, she can cook really well. So these are homemade flan, and there's like homemade pastries that you probably have not had before. And he's gonna go for. 
for carrot cake because he gets this at home. <laughs> eight eight two zero seven nine. If y'all think too hard, somebody's gonna eight, come. Eight two zero eight nine. So twenty eighty nine. Take several. Hey, you guys are not y'all aren't doing the assignment. You got to take two <laughs> things. Yeah. No, oh, he you gets one take too. Another one. Yeah. Did he not get a ticket? Come on, Greg. Sir, you are a dad. No, you come back up here. You come back up here. <laughs> this is your first Father's Day. You get two. There take you go. All right, good job. Take it back to Texas. Eight eight two one hundred. You go ahead and get two as well. See how long it lasts. You got two tickets. Good. Or a couple. Well, that's good. You can take four then. I have no clue what it is. I this man that. somehow ended up with two tickets. They felt sorry for him because he has all those kids. <laughs> <laughs> How many children do you have? Amen. He doesn't even know. know. <laughs> he doesn't remember. It's okay. Eight eight two zero nine seven. Eight eight two one one seven. So twenty one seventeen. Who's zero nine seven? Oh, that's you? Aubrey, you're not a dad. Thank you, Louie. <laughs> Are your legs broken? I need to tell you what we need. <laughs> she wants the flan. <laughs> Daddy wants a flan. Here, come here, Aubrey. Yes. And he wants this, too. <laughs> he wants this, too. 882072. <laughs> <laughs> eight, eight, Eight eight twenty one oh six. Twenty one oh six. Who is seventy two? Is that you? All right. All right. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> you better get something chocolate. <laughs> if I were picking you get for mama, two. it'd have to be chocolate. Pastor's That's right. coming back up because he acted like he didn't hear me say he gets two. Come on, Pastor. You can have an extra one. Ooh, All right, zero nine zero. Tommy. Who's that? Zero nine zero. Did you find something chocolate, Mr. Durrance? Did you get chocolate? No. Oh, you're in trouble. You're not getting dinner. Twenty eighty eight. Twenty eighty eight. Mr. Snook also has an assignment. He knows what he's supposed to be getting. He said something small. <laughs> Thank you. Twenty eighty eight. Who's eighty eight? Oh, okay. All right, 99. He has little little donkey babies. You said you had three new babies? How many more babies did you have on your little herd? Jimmy's coming. How many? Did you have new babies? Uh-oh. Five new babies. If y'all want to see the cutest little animals, go see him. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Did I do 99? Did I say 99? Oh, okay. Did he tell you what he wanted? You're just going to tell him what he wants? Chuck man's getting whatever <laughs> mama picks. <laughs> All right, 118. 2112. 2112. Y'all, this table, the it's not going down. Oh, Y'all got to yeah. get some more. <laughs> 70, 70, that's Mr. Keith's work, well, where, in work, oh, yeah. yeah, 92, <laughs> 92, 2092, <laughs> Rachel's getting delirious on me, 96, if y'all want to show, I would show up for VBS, <laughs> who's 96? Oh, granddaddy's 96. 78. There you go. Oh, good job, Mr. Keith. All right. He, now, he's he got a lot of mouths to feed. He needs to take two or three. So granddaddy is sending his motley crew up. Oh, he's sending all three. <laughs> <laughs> he's sending all three boys. Come on. Make it a party. Anybody else want to come up to represent granddaddy? Good job, granddaddy. Goodness. Way to go. <laughs> 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 <laughs 
Granddaddy wants cookies. Like chocolate chip cookies? Yes. Take those to Granddaddy, somebody. Mr. Jimmy. Jimmy. Mr. Jimmy. Jim Keith. Jim Jimmy, Keith. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. It was yeah, very great. hard to raise these boys. Okay, well, those cookies can be yeah, his dinner. Yeah. 84. Right. 2105. 2105. Yes. Yes, me too. Woo. Right? 84. Yeah. I said 84. What does Mr. Bill want? Is he a, is he a chocolate man or vanilla? Who's 2105? No. Flan? Flan is right Flan. here. Flan, yeah. These are flans. Take several. One for you, one for him. Absolutely. Your dad didn't want to get yes, up? Yes, ma'am. You can have anything you want. What is this? A couple. Luke, what is daddy like? What's That's his favorite? favorite? Uh, <laughs> well, there's strawberry cake. There's pound there's cake. Bars. You don't know what your dad likes. Lemon bars, snickerdoodle cookies. Does he like flan? <laughs> you don't know what flan is? Oh, it'll change your life. It's I'm amazing. Not even <laughs> Take that to dad. <laughs> All right. Get it one more. There you go. Yeah. All right, 93. Mr. Bill Gracie. Ooh. 2085. He has a hard job because he has to try to keep me straight, so he deserves extra, right. too. There's 2085. Mm. Chocolate chip cookies. There's not enough on that table to take These care of that. These are chocolate bars. Chocolate chip cookie bars. Oh, there's some right here. Carrot cake. Right here. Oh, yeah, look at there. There's a whole Ask dozen. Ask and you shall receive. Ooh. Did I say 67? I can't remember. 67. <gasps> Mr. Louie. Oh, boy. Me, me and Miss Connie have a hard job with Mr. Louie, too, because he's not supposed to be eating all this stuff either. <laughs> 2103. We're going to let you have just today only. 2103. Anything you want. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Miss Connie is not going to fuss at you today. Pound cake right here. Freebie day. He has orders, he says. <laughs> you get two. It's a freebie day for most sugar 68. Oh, that's Giggy's pound cake. Ernie, <laughs> Ernie's looking for Giggy's pound cake. <laughs> hey, Mr. Ernie, you get two. What did you tell him he forgot? Flan will change your life. Flan. Flan. Right there. there you go, Steve. Flan. flan will change your life. There's one left. Oh. 2095. Did 2095? We still got several people that haven't got Did I say yet. 68? I did? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. I can't remember if I'm coming or going. <laughs> 95's coming. All right, we're going to call several. 75. 83. Jim the year Bo. I was born. 83. Don Bowles. You just told on yourself because I told everybody you were 21. I'm going into 41 blazing. <laughs> 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 what you going to get? I don't know yet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we hid some on the side. All right, 109. Uh, cookie bars, chocolate chip cookie bars. A little less than half a pound, maybe? I don't know. I'm not. You're the baker. You're the professional. <laughs> one, one, one. Hey. 2101. Hey. 2101. Did y'all hear Mr. Allen? That's the kind of excitement we want to hear from you guys. Allen. Yay. When you get called, we want you jumping up saying, That's me. Yeah. Mr. Jeff, pick your poison. 2101. 86. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. That's Brother Adams oh. there. Did 2101 come, come up? Come on now. 2101. <laughs> huh? That's you? I'm going to put that aside. I don't know. We got any special orders here? I know. Who's? Did you get orders or are you just picking? you your own man. You, you get what you picking want because you wants. run that house. That's what happens. The ladies 80. at the house will just have to do. I think Shelby is telling me otherwise. 2108. 2108. Y'all follow Mr. Shannon's footsteps, and he said he don't get desserts for nobody but himself. Yeah, that's right. 2108. I'm getting, these tickets don't even have anybody. Rachel, nobody loves you. 114. <laughs> I do. I do. 
Oh. 114. Where are these people going? They got desserts. They're leaving. <laughs> Pastor, nobody's going to be awake while you're, <laughs> while you're preaching because they're all going to be eating their desserts. Pass out napkins and chocolate milk. I don't even know what number I'm on. What'd you do? I did 114. Nobody came. 87. Yeah, 2108 didn't come either. 87. 2107. Oh, you got yours. Okay. 2107? Yeah. We got, we got a taker. 113. What is he? Is he a chocolate there man or a vanilla man? There we go. All right. We only have four left. 2076. 2076. Oh, AJ made it down. Oh. oh. Yeah. Load up, buddy. You the deserve weekend it. warrior. AJ needs extra sugar yeah. from all the mess he had to do this weekend. <laughs> weekend 94. Warrior. AJ, there's flan down here. There's one flan left. Okay. 94. 2104. Miss Valerie is getting for Mr. John. Yeah, he's out working security. We got him working, working on the 2104. There's one well, flower. All right. Right there. Take several, several things. Go for it. Mm -hmm. 110. 110. Is that Mr. David? And this is the last one. If you have this number, you deserve the rest of the table. Oh, never mind. Whoa. Never mind. 2091. Whoa. 2091. There'll be a bake sale after church right away. I bet Uncle Stevie's <laughs> number is 98. No, we're going to sell the rest for 98. Yeah, exactly. That's Who else? Kyle? Kyle, what was your number? We called a bunch of numbers that people didn't come up, so you probably. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. Come on. 2108. Okay. 2101. Every, anything you'd like. All right, we're going to play a little game with what's left. We've been let guests come up <laughs> What number do you guys have? If we didn't call your number, come on up. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, if we didn't, if we didn't get you. Which one is it? James, did you come up? Tw yeah, 2116. We didn't call that one. J James didn't come up, did he? Oh, okay. Well, Andrew. I told Drew he was going to have to come out of the booth to get his. I don't want anything. Oh, Thank you. Though. His mom, his wife. Those are iced. She didn't care. Snickerdoodles. Pick what you want. Snickerdoodles. Drew, go after it. AJ, did you see the ice Snickerdoodles? I tried to tell it. AJ. Did you want ice Snickerdoodles? Please do. Ooh. All right, so we're going to play a little game with what's left. Who in the room, so I want to know, I know he's got a pile of kids, so you need to start counting, sir. Who has more than five kids? Stand up. Or who has five kids? If you'll stand up if you have five kids Ooh. or more, okay? Yeah. Granddaddy's standing up in his heart because <laughs> he has six. Good job. All right, if you have more than six kids, stay standing. Jody, sit down because we're not having any more. If you have more than seven kids, stay standing. He's over there. He's deliberating on how many kids he has right now. If you have more than eight kids, stay standing. Nine. Ten. Nope, Mr. Brown's still up. Yeah, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown's sitting down. How many kids do you have? Nine. Nine. Miss Miss Brown, how many kids do y'all have? Total of nine. So we have two tied for nine kids. You guys need to get busy and t and match their energy. They had thirty-five foster kids. Did y'all hear that? Thirty-five. Woohoo! That is awesome. That is really awesome, and that's hard work. I know that firsthand. Um, all right, so who has the youngest baby in the room? Um, <laughs> great, grandbabies. We'll start with dads because grandparents stay in September. We'll do that in September. So dads, who has the youngest? I know AJ has a little one. We have one that's baking. <laughs> Does anybody have one younger than six months old? So AJ gets that prize. 
You can get another dessert if you want to, or you can just say hello. All right. Um, we will say how many how many grandkids. So, oh yeah, y'all really got to get in deliberation over there. Granddaddy, how many grandkids do you have? Do you know? 30? Somebody said 30. Let's check with mama. 17 grandkids? 46? Great grandkids. Wow. Yeah. And one great great. That's my Baylor. Yeah. yeah, count them all, honey. Count yeah. them all. <laughs> See if you can beat granddaddy. You might, because you have nine kids. So while he's thinking, because it takes him a little minute to count everybody, at the end of the day, when Pastor finishes preaching, we're going to leave the desserts up here. Y'all please help us by taking them home. If you have a neighbor or somebody that you want to deliver, 17, you have nine kids, sir. They need to get busy. Tell them to give you some grandbabies. That's amazing. I just want to say happy Father's Day. Thank you um, to all of the men that we have in our church. I feel so blessed to be a part of a church that has such a strong family. Where's the pound cake? There might be one down there. It's gone. Oh, yeah. well, you can get another thing, though. Um, thank you guys for your leadership. Thank you. Um, for the foundation that you've laid for our church. We really appreciate you. And we just wanted to say one more time, happy Father's Day. And don't forget to bring stuff home today. All right. I have some people that are ready to come up and share and a song with us. Let's all stand together and sing together. Just one song before we have a special uh, for us this morning from from someone, from a member of the church. Amen? All right, roll it. I have a hope. I have a future. I have a destiny that is yet awaiting me. My life's not over. A new beginning's just begun, I have a hope, I have this hope. God has a plan, it's not to harm me, but it's to prosper me, and to lend me when I call He intercedes for me. Working all things for my good, though trials may come, I have this hope. I will yet praise Him, my great Redeemer. I will yet stand up and give Him glory with my life. He takes my darkness and He turns it into light. I will yet praise Him, my Lord, my God. My God is for me, he's not against me, so tell me whom then, tell me whom then shall I be, yes, me, great works he'll help me to proclaim, I have a hope, I have this hope, goodness and mercy, they're gonna follow me. And I'll forever dwell in the house of my great king no eye has ever seen. A lady's preparing there for me, though trials may come. I have this hope. I will yet praise him, my great redeemer. I will yet stand up and give him glory with my life. He leads me far. the God of heaven loves me. There's still hope for me to take, cause the God of heaven loves me. 
Now we have a special video. You may, you, you go ahead, kids down. Yeah, that's fine. We have a special video this morning put together by one of our members, and uh, his parents don't even know about it, but it's fixing to happen. This is from Micah Blakesley. <laughs> Sounds a 
were written by Mama Blakesley right over there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting us share that. Now, I'm going to start the sermon with a video. Amen. So you don't think absent fathers impact one's life? Yeah, right. Numerous studies have examined the correlation between absent fathers and crime later in life. Here are some statistics and findings. Fatherlessness and crime rates. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 19.7 million children, more than one in four, live without a father in the United States. The U.S. Department of Justice reports that 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. The National Fatherhood Initiative states that 85% of all children who exhibit behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, found that 85% of all children who show behavior disorders have an absent father. The National Center for Education Statistics found that 71% of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. Juvenile delinquency. A study published in the Journal of Research in Crime and Delinquency found that children from father absent homes were more likely to engage in delinquent behavior. The U.S. Department of Justice reports that 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions come from fatherless homes. A study published in the Journal of Marriage and Family found that children from father absent homes were more likely to engage in early sexual activity and have higher rates of teenage pregnancy. Criminal behavior. The National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent Health found that adolescents in father absent households were at a significantly higher risk of incarceration. A study published in the Journal of Research in Crime and Delinquency found that father absence was one of the strongest predictors of violent crime rates in a community even after controlling for other factors like poverty and education. It is important to note that while these statistics show a correlation between absent fathers and crime, they do not imply causation. Other factors such as socioeconomic status, family structure, and community environment also play significant roles in shaping an individual's behavior. I think you will agree with me we've never had a, a time in history and particularly in American history where we needed God to turn the hearts of the fathers back toward the home would you agree with me with that amen the time has come that we call our people and our, our brothers and everybody that we can influence back to sanity when it comes to the family and the home I don't want to imply if you're here today and you have been raised in a fatherless home or maybe you are a father raising your ch or, or living in a home, have lived in a home where there was no father, please don't uh, take this as personal insult to you today, knowing that, that it's not aimed at that. It's aimed at changing the problem in our culture today because I, I think as never before, we need the Lord to turn men's heart toward the home. So let's begin our prayer today as we think about that, turning men's hearts toward home. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you today, Lord, and we, we ask you, Lord, to move mightily in our midst here, Lord, in our lives, personal lives, our neighborhoods, our county, our state, our, our United States, but Lord, really all over the world, I pray that you will move with your powerful Holy Spirit, get a hold of men's hearts, and help them to pick up the mantle of fatherhood, being the fathers that they ought to be so that we can change the culture around us by having the right kind of fathers. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As you think about that, 
that thought, turning men's hearts toward home. Make sure this is on, brother. I'm not on back there, evidently. It's You got me on back there, brother? Luke chapter 1, and, and uh, John the Baptist's daddy was talking about the coming of John the Baptist, and he's getting ready for Jesus to come. And the Word of God says, He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. He will cause those who were rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. I would think today that you would agree with me that we need that to happen. We need that to happen desperately right now in our culture. And as we think about today, you have a whole generation of, of fatherless children, particularly fatherless young men, wondering, where's my daddy? Where is my daddy? Where, where is the daddy that should be taking care of me and raising me? Where is he? And never before in the history of our great nation has there been a problem like we have today in this area. The problem of missing daddies in the homes of our land. Since the 70s, this problem has increased year after year, and more men and fathers leave their homes and never look back. Of course, women do that too, but when the fathers do that, it's, it has a big, big impact, and it has a, had a big impact on our society. I was reading a statistic or, or listening to someone uh, quote a statistic this week. In divorce, 70% of the divorces are led by women. They, they initiate the divorce. But do you, know, you realize that there's a whole lot of men that don't want to accept responsibility anyway? And all the way back to the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, Adam and Eve had this fight that began between, between men and women. And God pr pronounced the curse, you know, said, ladies, you're going to have pain in childbirth. And your desire will be to your husband, but he'll rule over you. So there's been a war between men and women since there, since then. And so many times that translates into divorce today because people that don't know Christ don't have any real answers for that, the war between men and women. Whereas we do, because as the scripture said there, when the Lord would come and the Lord comes into a life, he fixes those things. You know, he will, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. He will call those who are rebellious to, to accept the wisdom of the godly. And, and, and my goal and, and the goal of our church and the mission of our church is to reach men and women, young men, young women, old men, old women, children with the gospel so that they will actually apply what the word of God says and that God will turn their hearts toward their children and particularly the men. Uh, I'm not a fan of UNICEF, but, but I, they're smart in this area. And, and even the secular organizations are, are realizing the effect of father, fatherless homes uh, in, in the world. And I quote what they say tonight, about 40% of the children in the Western world will go to sleep in homes in which their fathers do not live. Before they reach the age of 18, more than half of our nation's children are likely to spend at least a significant portion of their childhoods apart from their fathers. That's sad, isn't it? How many of you in here were raised with a daddy in the home? Just do, do a survey, look around. Most of us had a daddy in the home. Okay, put your hand down. That's not the majority today. In our generation and the generations before us, that was the majority would have raised their hand. Not today. When 70% of them don't have a daddy like we did. Father absence is the biggest social issue of our time, UNICEF says. Never before in this country have so many children been voluntarily abandoned by their fathers. Never before have so many children grown up without knowing what it means to have a father. Terrible, huh? Children growing up without a daddy in the home. A study was done on the mass shooters and some of the worst mass shootings in America, and it was found that out of the 27 mass shootings that they studied, 26 of them were caused by children from fatherless homes. Now, Snopes tried to refute that, and they came up and said, oh, no, that's not true. No, it is true. They said, really, it's only about 25 of 27. I'm thinking... Look at the problem. The problem is the fatherless homes. It's not the number. It's how many things happen because children don't have uh, a father in the home. Fatherless is the most harmful demographic trend in this generation. It is a leading cause of the de de declining child well-being in our society. It's also the engine 
driving most of our urgent social problems in children and adults alike. If this trend continues, fatherless is likely to change the shape of our society. And newsflash, <laughs> fatherless homes have greatly affected America already. Really. Look around, that's what's, what's happening. It's, it's one of the main causes is fatherlessness. Men that wouldn't pick up the baton. Men that wouldn't love their children and families like they should. Yeah, you got bad women, but when you get the men that are supposed to be leaders and they walk away and they don't pick up the mantle that God's given them, then we have a real problem. Did you know how much of our national budget is spent upon social issues? Do a study sometime. Local budgets and national budgets, probably 60 to 80 percent or more of our budgets are spent on dealing with social problems. Problems that were created a whole lot of times by this problem, men that wouldn't pick up their responsibilities. So today we're addressing an, an age-old sin problem. It's been around a long time. It, it didn't start here because Luke was written, you know, before Jesus even came on the scene, right before his ministry, Luke 1 was talking about that. John the Baptist came on and was preaching repentance, and the people were coming down to the Jordan to be baptized, and Jesus showed up, got baptized, and right after that, when John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, boom, he's on the scene. And when Christianity made its inroads with the early church and began to change lives all across the Roman Empire, one of the big things that changed was it changed the hearts of men. Changed the hearts of women, absolutely. But it changed the hearts of men, and God began to turn the hearts of the men toward their homes. So we live in a society today where the responsibilities that, that you and I might have grown up with, I say you and I, people my age are just maybe a little bit younger. When I was young, you know, you, you were expected to, if you took a wife or you, you fathered a child, you were expected to pick up the mantle and take care of them. How many of you remember that? If you, start, if you fathered a child, you're supposed to take care of them. That is gone forever in our culture. And it's gone because the fathers have not picked up the mantle and the fathers' hearts are not turned toward the children. It's an age-old problem. Uh, it was happening in Jesus' day. It was mentioned here in the Scripture. We don't know how prevalent it was, but we know it existed or the Holy Spirit would not have put it there in the Scripture. There were many men in Jesus' day that needed to repent and start being the fathers and husbands God wanted them to be. Did you know how easy, you're talking about no-fault divorce. They had it in Jesus' day too. Did you know what you, if you wanted to divorce a woman, guys, you know what you would do? You'd go before the council and you would say this, I divorced thee, I divorced thee, I divorced thee, and she, you, she's, she's thrown out on her ear. <laughs> because women were like cattle or like animals in their culture. They did not value them. But the God of heaven values children, and he values women. And God has always elevated the plight of, of women and children, and, and the, the Christianity changed all that. And it began to change the hearts of men when they began to turn their hearts toward their children and love their families like they should. And so today when we talk about this, we're not, this isn't a new problem. This is an age-old problem. It's just been magnified in our time. You see, anybody can, be a, be a, anybody can be a father, but it takes someone special to be a dad. You, hear, you got that? There's a whole lot of seed donors out there, but there's not a whole lot of fathers out there that are real, being real fathers and dads. I love that video, by the way. That was wonderful. You, you were a lot younger in that video. <laughs> but I thank God that, that his son, that was his son playing the guitar and singing that song, and it just a wonderful rendition of what it really means to be a dad. And I thank God for that. Thank God for being good parents. And there's a lot in this room that have done that. Thank God for you, that you've been, you've been real dads, not just father and children, but you've been daddies to them. Jesus' words, sin will be rampant everywhere, <laughs> and there, the love of many will grow cold. You remember that scripture? Well, it's here. Newsflash, it's here. <laughs> People don't, don't act in love like they should. 
women or men these days can abandon their families and not even feel remorse. And go, they just leave. Go find somebody else and leave their children. What's up with that picture? I can't even think about how that would be. I, that's not how I was raised. That's not what the Word of God has taught. And, and we've been raised by Christian parents that taught us right. Uh, interesting Greek word in that scripture there uh, when it said the, the love of many will grow cold. And, and the Greek word, it's hard to see it there, but there, you know, it's pronounced suko. And it uh, means to breathe, blow, by, cool by blowing, or to be made cold or cool. Uh, it's a metaphor of, of a waning love, love that just kind of goes away, or the evaporation that causes cooling. But look at the last one, the disappearance of love. The disappearance of love like va evaporation of water. Where did the love go? Why don't people love like they should? Well, because Jesus said it was going to happen. The love of many will evaporate. It'll suddenly be gone. It won't be like it was. I remember when I was a kid, it was unusual for people to, to leave their homes and not take care of their kids. Unusual. If people did that in those days, they were shunned. They were looked down upon because that was just not normal. You just don't do that. So having kids doesn't make you a father. Raising them does. People that stay with it and stay by the, stay by the stuff, so to speak, and take care of their children. Today, children live with their mothers only. <laughs> Look at the statistics. I can't, we don't have time to quote them, but uh, white children, you know, if you, this is from 1960 to 2010. By 19, but from then to 2010, 18% of the children were living with their mothers only. That's how many years ago now? What's 2024? How many is that? 14 years ago, that was the stat. Look at Hispanic children. 26.3% of them were living with their mothers only. In the black children, it was 48.5% living without a daddy in the home, by mothers only. Brothers and sisters, we've got a problem. The society has a problem. It's creating all sorts of problems. The, the, the crimes, Google it yourself. Go, go research it. I was researching right before church, and, and I printed off sheet after sheet after sheet of, of problems that come from fatherless homes. And, and I didn't even scratch time to scratch the surface. I've studied this before. And it, it's amazing how much information is out there. Critics of Christianity, even people don't believe like we do, are in agreement with us on this. Fatherless homes are causing some major issues. And it's time that God gets a hold of men's hearts and they turn their hearts back toward their children and back toward their families and back toward their wives and and keep their homes going. Spending time with kids. Started in 65 and, and all the way up to 2010 on this statistic. The average number of hours parents spend with their children each week rose since 85. Back in 65, mothers would spend an average of 10.5 hours per week with their kids. Fathers about two and a half hours, a little more. Look at the statistic over here in 2010. Fathers spend... In 2010, about seven hours. Moms, about 13.7. How many hours are there in a week? Ever figured that out? Figure the hours in a week and then compare that to it. Parents aren't spending much time with their kids, are they? Now, we are we're allowing them to be babysat. We give them this, and they're, they're babysat with this, or an iPad, or some sort of social tool or social media tool, who's influencing them? Is it, are the parents influencing them? No. It's whoever is in control of this. And you know what's on that these days. The parents that allow their children to have unfettered access to that without some supervision, they're in for a shock one day when they find out what their kids have really been into. So mom and dad, be involved. Get involved. Get in their business. You're not there to be their friend, okay? If you want to be your child's friend, you're going to raise a terrible child. You're not there to be their friend. You're there to be their parent. You're there to love them and, and lead them in the right way. As we think about this, we've got to discover the one solution for our failing culture. The one solution. Luke one seventeen. he'll be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. 
The Lord came, by the way, right after this. He's the one he appeared on the scene. Christianity blew into the world when, when Jesus was, was identified of who, of the, as Messiah, that he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. He will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Jesus speaking about John the Baptist. This was John the Baptist's daddy making that prophecy about John the Baptist and Jesus coming. But Jesus said this about John the Baptist. He said, John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. Jesus said this. <laughs> this is cool now. I wish Jesus could say that about me. I wish he could say it about you. He said, I tell you the truth. Of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. <laughs> Think about that. That's something for Jesus to say that. He said, nobody's greater than him, John the Baptist. He said, yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Brothers and sisters, the little children you have in your home right now, and you're leading them to Christ. This, this couple on the front row, how many of y'all have six, right? Five. And they're leading their children to follow Jesus. Their children are in children's church. But I promise you this, if they were here right now, I could ask them biblical questions. They could give me a logical right answer. You know why? Because mommy and daddy are treating them and, and teaching them right. Listen, the job is critical. Stephen Maxine worked with CEF, and they have, how many clubs do we have, Steve, around this area of Florida? How many? 17 child evangelism Bible clubs, after school clubs. And many, many young people come to Jesus through CEF. Yeah. You know what it said? Jesus said what? Even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. That means these little bitty kids that we're spending time with, these little kitty children that God has entrusted us with are critical. It's important that we influence them. The one that Miss Allison's carrying going to have, you know what it is yet? Little girl. You gonna, what are you going to name her? Do you know? You going to have a name yet? Allison's. What year did you graduate, Allison? She's at one of our 06 graduates. And, but I know this, I promise you, they will raise their child to love Jesus like, they, like her mama did. Now, how do I know that? Because I know Allison. I watched Allison grow up from a little girl all the way up. I watched Wendy when she was 17 when she started working here. And, well, she really wasn't. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them how old you were. <clears throat> but, but her and Greg have been so faithful at our church. I thank God for faithful people like that. But I know this, they passed it on to their children. You see, Jesus said, even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. That means what we do in our homes, and when, when it says turning your hearts toward your children, your children are, are what it's all about. The greatest thing you can ever do if God gives you a child is raise them to honor and love God. It's what God has put us here on the earth to do, turning the hearts of the fathers toward their children. And, and their children, you pour the love of God into them, and they become great, great lovers of Jesus. And they go out, guess what? I don't know too many of you have been raised like that that are out causing problems. I don't know too many like that that are out there tearing up stuff in the streets, you know, hurting people, robbing, pillaging, raping, and stealing. No, you don't. If they're raised the right way, they don't do that kind of stuff. And it starts with... He'll turn the father's hearts toward their children. You see, it's critical. We're at, a, we're at a critical point in our society. What we need is men who will turn their lives over to Jesus. Listen, there's some of you that are holding back. There's some men right here today. You have thought about it, but you have not come on across for Jesus yet. And I'm, 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 throwing, the, I'm throwing it out here today at you. Listen, quit being a wimp, Okay? It takes a real man to stand for Jesus. It takes a man that will step it up and say, I don't care what the world does as for me and my house. I'm going to follow the Lord, and we're going to follow the Lord in my home. And I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the gauntlet out to you guys, a challenge. There's some of you that need to step it up. Okay, You need to get off your duff, quit being wimps, and let's, let's walk with Jesus like we We need some men who will turn their lives over to Jesus. We will need some men who allow the Spirit of God to control their lives. Quit being mean-spirited and hateful and, and, and doing what you do and not being godly men. Listen, turn your life over to Jesus. Let the Spirit of God control your life. Men who will lead their children and wives toward the Lord. Sometimes that's not popular. Sometimes you don't make friends in your family when you do that. But somebody told me today, where's he at? Where's Jimbo? 
Where Jimbo? Is he outside? Where? Oh, count. Oh, he's in count. Okay. I said, Jimbo, what do you, what, in fact, I'm going to wait till he gets done. I'm, I'm going to put him on the spot. I told him I was anyway. He knows ahead of time, so don't, we're not, I'm not going to embarrass him. He knows. Did you know that sometimes you have to tell your family that we're going to do things and, and the wife, wife won't like it and the kids won't like it? You know that? Yeah. It's not always popular to, to, to make them do the right thing. But I know this. On Sunday morning when we were young, when it came time for church, guess where we were? Church. My daddy set the, the, the rule. My mama enforced the rule. And it came time to be at God's house. We were God's house. There's a whole lot of times I didn't want to be at God's house. I'd rather have been fishing or doing something else or surfing. Pardon? We didn't know any better because we were taught the right way. We were taught that on God's day, you came to God's house. You know, it's, the Bible says it, is, it was good when they said unto me, let us what? Go to the house of the Lord. It's good to go to church. You need to be in church. You need to have your children in church. And th- Look at all you that are here today. Thank God you all believe that. But we need some men that will allow the Spirit of God to control their lives, not the bottle, not the drugs, not the culture, but the Spirit of God. He said, that, he said that he's going to come and he's going to work in people's lives. He's going to turn the rebellious hearts away from rebellion to following God. And he's going he's to turn their hearts toward their children. I don't know if that gets all over you. That gets all over me. <laughs> Just thinking that that's the way God works. He works in turning people's lives around. Did Jimbo come back? There he is. Come here, Jimbo, just for a minute. I already prompted him for this, so he's not being overly embarrassed. <laughs> what did you say? He's, he's a good father. Tell me what, what it takes to be a good father. Well, I had to find some stuff. All right. Go ahead. And change my opinion. Okay, I change his opinion. I, I talked to, an, I talk to another father that, is, that I, he's got way more kids than I got. Hold on a second. And I, I respect him a lot. And, and one of the things he said is you need to love your wife in front of your kids so they know how to love on somebody. And then also something I'd thought of on, on that note is be present in your kid's life. Whether you are a dance dad like Bri is, or you're a baseball coach, or you're a volleyball coach, whatever your kids are involved in, get involved in it and be a father that way. Amen. What about church? Did you make them go to church? (laughs) And be a leader when they go to church. If your kids are going to church, you need to be there taking them, just like he's saying. You don't don't just drop them off. Don't just drop them off and then go on Wednesday night. If your kids are going to youth, be here. If you don't get involved in doing a Sunday school class or youth on Wednesday night, Come to church over yeah, here. Bible study. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jimbo. Jimbo's just one of many we have here that I, I consider godly fathers that are doing the right thing. They're doing, they're doing it. They're living it. And I thank God for them. They are men that would have allowed the Holy Spirit to control their lives. They were men that lead their children, their wives toward the Lord. They were men who will provide and protect their wives and children. They don't abandon them. They love them, and they're protecting them and providing for them. That's what we have to have today if we want to change it around. And also men who will stay their cor- the course in their marriages. Did you know this? Women, or 70% of the women start a divorce, but think of how many men just walk away. Think about this. Think about how many men won't marry the woman. They'll live with her and enjoy the fruits of marriage, but they won't marry her. That's, that's, I don't think that's good. I don't, the Bible calls that something. You know what the Bible calls that? Fornication. You know what that means? It's really a Greek word, pornea. That's where it comes from. Where do you think, what, what do you think the root word, pornea, is the root word of what else in the English language? Eh, all kinds of stuff, isn't it? And, but see... You don't want to live with one unless you're married to her. You don't want to have relations with her unless you're married to her. Okay, that's biblical. And see, there are a whole lot of people. Well, some of it's on the fault of the women. Because if they'll give it away free, why should he pay for it? Right? I know that's blunt, but right down the line of what God's saying. I don't mean to embarrass. If that embarrass you, I'm sorry, ladies. But there's a lot of people out there today that live in. Sexual promiscuity, meaning loose morals, 
that aren't doing it God's way. And then we wonder why the home don't survive. We wonder why it's all messed up. Well, it's because we're not doing it God's way. Because when John the Baptist's daddy said it right, he said, when, when the Lord comes, he'll do what? He'll turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. They won't be fathering children and without being their daddy, is what he's saying. They'll stay with it. They'll raise them. They'll do what they're supposed to do like many of ours have. See, the time is now. Chuck Swindoll said, I like this, what he said. He said, remember when men were men? Remember when you could tell by looking? Remember when men knew who they were, liked how they were, didn't want to be anything but what they were? Remember when it was the men who boxed and wrestled and bragged about how much they could bench press? Remember when it was the women who wore the makeup, earrings, and bikinis? Remember when, when, it, when it was the men who initiated the contact and took the lead in a relationship, made lifelong commitments, and modeled a masculinity grounded in security and stability? End of quote. I think he said it well, didn't he? And we have a whole culture right now that mocks and ridicules true, authentic manhood, and they've labeled it toxic masculinity. When a man really wants to step up and be a leader, he's ridiculed and mocked by the other side. And I'm here to tell you today, and I'm here to de declare to you the righteous view of that today. We need some real men to step it up and be. The time is now. You know, our nation is in deep trouble, deep, deep trouble. We need some real men to step up and be the fathers God wants them to be. And, and the question for you today is, will you, be, will you be one of those? We got some, already got some here that are doing, doing it. Uh, Enoch was one of the men in his day. You don't read much about him because he walked with God and took, God took him. But it said, Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because, because God took him. He was walking along and with God one day, and God said, he said, all right, I'm going home. And God said, well, you want to just go home with me today? He said, yeah, let me just, let's just go home with you. So he, he'd gone. He'd gone. And why, why did that happen? It happened because he was walking with God in close fellowship. We need some men who will walk in close fellowship with God. We need some men to get it, get it together. Come on, get your stuff together, boys. Quit being wimps and, and not walking and doing what you ought to do with God. Step up for God and do what you're supposed to do. Noah was one of the men in his day. Genesis 6, 9, and this is the account of Noah and his family. Look what it says. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. <laughs> Woo, only one man of the whole earth is doing right. He's doing it, though. And he walked in what? Close fellowship with God. And guess what? When he got on the ark, you remember who he had with him? His, his three sons and their wives. Out of all the people on the earth, eight were saved. It could have saved thousands, and nobody, got, nobody listened. But guess what? His children did. And Jesus said, what, the least of these in the kingdom of God are better than, than John was. So it's critical we, we be like Noah, we be like Enoch, that we walk with God. Abraham was one of those men in his day. Abram, in Genesis 15, 6, and Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. In other places it said, Abraham was called a friend of God. Men, wouldn't it be cool after you're dead and gone that they said, Oh, Tom was a friend of God. <laughs> Bill was a friend of God. Clay was a friend of God. John was, wouldn't it be neat if you could, they could say that about you and me? That we would walk in close fellowship with God and, and our lives would be like these saints of old that walk closely with God in a culture gone to hell. Their culture was gone to hell too. <laughs> Enoch's day it was bad. Noah's day it was so bad that God flooded the earth and killed everybody else. And see, our, you say it's bad in our day. Oh yeah, it's really bad. That doesn't matter. What matters is what are you going to do about it, men? Are you going to be the man that says, I'm going to live different? I don't care what the world's doing. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I am going to walk with God 
and, and on my tombstone they can say, if he did nothing else, he was a friend of God and he walked with God. Moses was one of those men in his day. Exodus 4.20, so Moses took his wife, <laughs> there it is, his wife and sons, put them on a donkey and headed back to the land of Egypt. And in his hand he carried what? He carried the staff of God. <laughs> what did he do with that old stick? Ooh, he performed miracles with that stick, didn't he? And he became one of the greatest leaders of humankind because, why? Because he walked with God. See, it doesn't matter what people are doing around you. What matters is what you're doing in your home, man. It matters what you're doing on your job, man. It matters on what you're doing in your county, man. It matters on what you're doing in your state, man. Listen, he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. David was one of those men in his day. Second Chronicles says, And now, O Lord God of Israel, carry out the additional promise you made to your servant David, my father. For you said to him, If your descendants guard their behavior and follow, faithfully follow my law as you have done, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. Now, O Lord God, fulfill the promise to your servant David. Of course, many of them didn't after that. But I promise you this, David did. <laughs> David did. Moses did, didn't he? You said there, there are people in every generation that walk with God. There are a lot of people out there that are just old wild boys that just want to do what everybody else is doing, okay? Want to be, you want to, whatever they're partying and doing, you want to do. You can't go ahead if that's what you want to do. Well, guess what? You'll never be counted in this bunch. You'll never be one of the men that goes down in history when, the, when it's all said and done and, and God reveals the history of the world. You won't be on that list of being one that walked with God unless you make a decision to do it now. Because see, the choice is yours. You can be whatever you want to be. But my challenge to you men is to be men of God. Men that will take it, step it up. Okay, Step it up a notch. There's so many others in the scriptures that we could name and we, we don't have time to do that today. Uh, in our time there are many that have stood for God. i tell you one thing. Where's Don Bold? Where's Don Bold at? Don Bold, stand up. That man right there, I can tell you what. That's the real deal, okay? The real deal. He's not a fake. He walks with God. See that man right there? Dr. Bryan, stand up. That man right there? Take it to the bank. He's the real deal, okay? James, stand up. You and Stuart in the back, stand up. Here's two back there. Stuart, stand up, Stuart. Stand up, James. Here's, here's some real ones, okay? Stand up. If I don't call on you, stand up. Don't, don't mean you're not one. You're... These are some that have been here a long time that I know have walked with God. Mark's walked with God. Mark, raise your hand, big Mark, okay? You can't see back there in the lights. They got me blinded. Granddaddy Keith, I don't know if you can get up. Can you stand? Stand up for a minute. Granddaddy Keith. 52, he started walking with God. 1952, he made a decision. He was on the in, at Victor Chemical Plant in the, the silo at the top of a chemical plant, working at a, at a silo, and God touched his life, and he made a decision to follow the Lord with his life. And, and you see the result of that. One man making one decision to follow the Lord. Louie, there's another real one right there, boys. Now, if I didn't call your name, that don't mean you're not real. We're just running out of time. Steve Carlson, another one. We have some godly men here. Bill Gracie. They, these guys walk with the Lord. I know them personally. I've been around them a long time, and I'm a, I'm a critic. I'm, I'm very skeptical of people because I've been around a lot of people, and I can tell you there's some real fakes out there. These aren't fake, and we have a lot of other men in our group here. They have ta they've stood. They decided. They made a decision. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to be that man that can be counted. I'm going to be the one that God has turned my heart toward my children. I'm going to be that one. I'm going to be like that. You know. So if you're here today, maybe God's talking to you. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know you, a lot of you, but I know this, the Holy Spirit is, knows you, and he knows where you live. He knows what you are. Do you know what your character really is? What, you know what, what your character is is what you are when nobody's watching. 
Ooh, that's pretty pointed, ain't it? You say, quit preacher, you quit preaching and go on the meddling now. But you are when nobody's watching. That's your real character. So the challenge today is, will you listen to the Holy Spirit of God? Will you become that man that God wants you to be? Do you have the grit <laughs> that, will, that will be a, the man that will be a real father? If you allow the Holy Spirit to continually turn your heart towards your children, towards your wife, towards your family, will you be that? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to have a quiet invitation today. And, and remember the text that we had. Remember so you that. don't think absent fathers impact one's life? I don't know how that clicked. I clicked the wrong thing. He said, he will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. He will cause, cause those who are best to accept the wisdom of the godly. All I'm doing today is pouring out the wisdom of God from the scriptures. That's all this is, okay? haven't meant to jump on you and offend you in any way other than if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, telling you what you need to do. If you're here today and, and God has told you that there's some things that you need to do different to become the man that God wants you to be, I want you to quietly put your hand up and hold it for a minute so I can see you and then put it back down and say, the Lord's speaking to me. There's some things I'm going to be changing, not right now. Amen. Anybody? Put your hand up, put it back down. Be honest. Amen. You see, all of us have some things we need to change. Everybody from the preacher on down, but there's things we need to be different, doing different. Not that we're doing horrible things, but they're just habits and things that we shouldn't be around or doing so we can be those men that hearts are turned toward their homes and toward their families like Jesus. When Jesus gets a hold of you, you don't have to be coerced into doing what I'm asking you to do. You'll do it because you love the Lord. There's somebody here today that say, well, I, this sounds kind of new to me. I don't know much about what you're talking about, preacher. But you'd say, I'm on, I, I don't know a lot about it, but I know this. That's from today on, I'm going to turn my life over to the Lord. I'm going to let him be the king of my life, and I'm going to try to walk with him from the rest of my life. Anybody would say this, I haven't done that, but I'm going to make that commitment today. Put your hand up, put it back down if you, if you mean that. Okay, Lord, you've seen the hands that were raised, and Lord, right now I pray for those that raise their hands. Lord, they'll follow through with whatever they commitment they made to you. And Lord, from here on out, they'll be like these scriptures that we read, these men in the scriptures. Lord, they'll walk closely with you. And Lord, when you point out things in their life they need to change, they will change quickly. They'll abandon the sin that's causing them to sin. They will turn to you and allow your Holy Spirit to walk in their life and control their life from here on out. Lord, help us because we sure need your touch today in America and across the world. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We thank you for coming with us today. If you uh, haven't been in our Wednesday night uh, Bible studies, there's it's a lot of good stuff in that book of Ephesians that we're learning. And uh, if you didn't, how many of you did not get an invite by email to get, a, get an account through Right Now Media? Raise your hand if you didn't get an invite, because I want to make sure you do. Okay, how many of you did get an invite? Raise your hand. Some of y'all ain't voting. Are y'all awake? This is important. I'm asking a real important question. If you did not get an invite from me by email to join Right Now Media with your own account, raise your hand. Okay, I got one, two, three. If you make sure you put your name on a piece of paper with your email, and I will make sure you get a new invite. What you do is you go in there and you create your own free account. And you have access to 20-something thousand different things relating to Bible studies and self-helps and tremendous tool that we have now. And on Wednesday night, we're actually using, right now, media. We're using the Ephesians study by J.D. Greer. And if, if those of you that are doing the small groups that you need help with that, see me afterwards, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you a little bit. So love you a lot. Thank you for coming today. Miss Jessie, you want to give them in instructions again?
Pick up, pick up some, pick up some sweets. You're dismissed.